Capacitors are rated in microfarads. A capacitor is rated in microfarads. The more microfarads a capacitor has, the more of a charge it will store, the more of a charge it will hold. Now, actually, our unit of capacitance is really the farad, F-A-R-A-D. That's another one of those dead guy terms. In this case, it was named after a guy named Michael Faraday a brilliant mathematician and electronic uh, genius kind of guy. In fact, it's Michael Faraday that invented the electric motor and discovered electromagnetism and, and magnetic fields and all kinds of stuff, really just amazing stuff. Um, and so uh, we, our unit of capacitance is the farad. Well, a one farad capacitor is huge. A one farad capacitor, depending on the voltage rating of it, is a gigantic, among us, can be a giant thing. We actually use, and it's much bigger than anything we need in games. We actually use capacitors that are rated in millionths of a farad, micro farads. Now, remember before when we were talking about the resistor, the metric prefix, the millions, mega, kilo, times thousand, remember that? Well, we use real big things in electronics, and we use real itty bitty teeny weeny things as well. So, we have mega, which means times one million. We have kilo, which means times 1,000. Those are our big things. Now we have itty bitty things. We have milli things. Milli means divide by 1,000 or times 1 1,000th, of course, same thing. And we have micro things. Like, for instance, we can have millivolts. Millivolts, milliamps, milliwatts. We can have microamps and microvolts and micro things as well. And micro is divide by one million or times one one millionth of something. And so our capacitors, the, the electrolytic capacitors that we use in games, the ones that fail a lot, are rated in millionths of a farad, micro farads, millionths of a farad. Uh, the one I gave you, I think, is like 100 microfarads, isn't it? You look at it. Doesn't it say 100? Yeah. Okay. Well, we use a capital letter M for mega as an abbreviation. We use a lowercase m for milli. Wow, what are we going to do for micro? Now we're screwed because we only have two M's. We only got a capital M and a lowercase m. We have to use something else for million. What we usually do in this case is we go to the Greek alphabet. And we use the Greek letter mu, which looks like this. That's the Greek letter mu for microfarads. And so we abbreviate microfarads like this, mu f, microfarads. And if you look at the capacitor, like for instance this larger capacitor that I have here, oops, 3300, you see the Greek letter mu, 3300 microfarads. <laughs> So you see the term microfarads abbreviated with the, the Greek letter mu. Anytime you see the mu in front of something, it means micro. For instance, I'll show you later, uh, in, when we talk about monitors, we'll be talking about things in terms of microseconds, microseconds, millions of a second, the Greek letter mu. But because the Greek letter mu looks a lot like our letter u, you'll sometimes see that as an abbreviation for microfarads. For instance, we might have a, a capacitor that's 3300, like I just showed you, microfarads, the Greek letter mu, microfarads. And you'll see it on the schematic diagram and everything. We'll look at those shortly. You know, you might have a capacitor that's 2000 microfarads. It might be abbreviated uf. Because the Greek letter mu looks so much like our letter u, you might see the term microfarads abbreviated uf. So if you've ever wondered what an uf is, an uf is a microfarad.
or enough is enough, I guess, whatever. Um, you might also see it abbreviated. You might have a 1000 MFD microfarad. These things all mean the same thing. It'll be abbreviated all the same way. You could have a capacitor, might just say MF, and that doesn't mean MOFO, that means uh, microfarads. And you'll see it on the schematic, but um, usually the, the proper technical way is that they abbreviate it with the Greek letter mu microfarads. The more microfarads a capacitor has, the more of a charge it can store. The more microfarads it has, the, the bigger, electrically speaking, it is. That is, the more of a charge it will store. For instance, uh, the capacitor that I used to demonstrate that I charged up and then discharged it to show you the lamp deal, uh, this was uh, 18,000, yeah, 18,000 microfarads. Um, typically in a uh, power supply, uh, we have capacitors that are 3,300 microfarads, like the one I showed you. We use everything from a, from a half a microfarad up to, you know, 18, 20,000 microfarads, all kinds of different uh, all kinds of different values. And they do different things in different circuits. One of the ratings, so, so capacitors actually have two, two specifications, electrolytic capacitors, well, all capacitors. One is its capacitance in microfarads. How many microfarads does the capacitor have? You know, is it one microfarad? Is it 10? Is it 4.7? Is it 1,000? Is it 3,300? How many microfarads it has? does it have. The second rating of a capacitor is the voltage rating of the capacitor. The second rating is the voltage rating of a capacitor. Uh, what's the voltage rating on the cap that you have? It's, it's 100 microfarads, 10 volts, isn't it? Okay, what the voltage rating means is the voltage rating of a capacitor is the maximum amount of voltage that the capacitor can handle. The voltage rating of a capacitor is not how much voltage it puts out. It only puts out what you put into it. The voltage rating of a capacitor is the maximum that that capacitor can handle. For instance, if I take a 16 volt capacitor and charge it with a 6 volt battery, I only get 6 volts out of it. It's the maximum it can handle. Um, you have to substitute parts a lot. When you have to substitute capacitors, you can always use a capacitor with a higher voltage rating. I do this a lot. For instance, um, I carry around these boxes here, and they're basically just like tackle boxes full of capacitors. It's just full of, of different kinds of capacitors. Uh, one common value that I use a lot is 10 microfarads. And in here I've got 10 microfarad, 200 volt capacitors. But a couple of weeks ago I had to, um, I had to fix a monitor on, in, in one of the classes, and uh, I needed a 10 microfarad, 16 volt capacitor. I use the 10 microfarad 200 volt. It works fine. Remember, it's the voltage rating of a cab isn't how much it puts out. It's not going to put out 200 volts. It's the maximum it can handle. So it's kind of just like in your automobile. Let's say you have a little Toyota or something, and your car battery is only this big. You could put a car battery in that's this big. You just won't be using all the capability of it. Same kind of thing. Okay. So you can always go up in voltage. In many cases, you can go up in microfarads as well, but you have to be careful about that. And at this point, you folks are not advanced enough to know what I'm talking about in terms of when you can do it. I'll show you later on, though. Um, primarily, for now, let's leave it at this. You can always use a capacitor with the same or higher voltage, but the number of microfarads should be the same when you change capacitors. For now, I will tell you places where you can actually get away with more capacitance and, and it works perfectly okay. But capacitors fail. Electrolytic capacitors fail a lot. It's, it's a pretty common failure. In fact, where parts like diodes and transistors and resistors can, uh, theoretically, they can kind of last forever, a capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor, is guaranteed to fail eventually. 100% of the time, electrolytic capacitors eventually fail. And the reason for that is that the electrolyte, the stuff that's, what do they do with that torn apart capacitor? I think you tossed it. Did I toss it somewhere? 
well, that electrolyte that I showed you, there it is, you know, that, that soaks the paper, and you can kind of see that it's wet. You know, it's, you know, you can kind of see through it. Um, the electrolyte eventually dries out. That's what happens. And heat is the thing that causes that to happen. Heat is the number one enemy of these things. They don't like to run hot at all. And you know that, especially in a monitor, it gets quite hot up there. Not only is it at the top of the game where all the heat rises, but the monitor itself generates heat. The picture tube gets hot and some other stuff, a lot of resistors and things get hot in it. And as a result, uh, electrolytic capacitors fail a lot. And when they fail, what happens is they become less of a capacitor. When it, let's say it starts out as 3,300 microfarads. Over a period of time, it loses its char, it loses its ability to hold the charge. It becomes a 3,000 microfarad. And then a couple of months later, it's only 2,500 microfarads. And then it becomes a 2,000 microfarad. And, you know, it just it just becomes less of a capacitor. Now, uh, depending on what the circuit is that it's in, you'll see all kinds of different symptoms. In a monitor, it causes everything from a distorted picture, where you've probably seen this, where the picture is sh uh, shrunken down at the top, squished at the top, and stretched at the bottom, or the side of the picture are curvy, uh, it just looks distorted, those are capacitor failures. In a uh, power supply, we'll see that, that there's lots of capacitor failures in power supplies, and it causes everything from a, from a power supply that just doesn't work at all to a power supply that creates all kinds of strange electrical noise. Sometimes you've seen this on the screen where you see the, the video game playing, whatever the game is, and you see these diagonal lines very closely spaced, kind of drifting all around the screen. It's called herringbone uh, interference. That comes from the bad capacitors in the power supply. We'll talk more about that on Wednesday. Now, fortunately for us, much of the time you can look at, capa at a capacitor and see if it's good or bad, which is really excellent. Much of the time you can just look at it and see if it's good or bad. And here's the kind of thing you're looking for. Number one, whoa, hey, avalanche. When you look at the capacitor, if you look at the top of it, do you see how the plastic coating is even all the way around the top? If you look at this plastic coating, this, this edge here, do you see how it evenly covers the top? If this is shrunk back, if this is pulled back at all, that capacitor is on its way out. What do I do with my bat caps? Here they are. You notice a couple of things about this cap. Number one, the plastic coating, you see how it's pulled back somewhat. It, get, it gets much worse than this, actually. I'm trying to get the reflections down here. If you see that, well, basically, if you see that the uh, plastic coating, instead of coating the top like this, has pulled down like this, and you see the metal part, the whole disc on the top exposed, that's definitely bad. There's no question about that. Another thing you'll see is that the top will be domed. That is, the top is supposed to be perfectly flat. And if it's pooched out at all, it'll swell up. You can just barely see here that it's not exactly perfectly flat. You see how it's kind of domed a little bit, not terribly. But but if it's if it's like domed at all on the top, like a bad can of pork and beans, that's definitely bad. And then when it gets really bad, you see this. You see that the top is blown right open, and you talk about being domed. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now in this case, it's broken open. This is the safety vent. On the top of most capacitors these days, you'll see that the top is scored. And the reason that the top is scored is that's a safety vent so that if, and here you can see that this, see how the top is scored on this one. It's a safety vent so that um, when the capacitor uh, does go bad, uh, it just opens up and lets the pressure out. Instead of having this top sail off and become a missile, which is what, what happens, uh, you know, the safety vent just opens up and lets the pressure out. Uh, we have a hole in the door of our shop that's about the size of a dime 
from you talking about, let's blow one up, let's blow one up. Well, that's exactly what happened in the shop. And the guy said, hey, I'm going to blow one up. And he put it over here, hooked it up backwards, and it shot, you know, a good, it was a good um, 10 feet over to the door and just blasted a hole in it. So be careful. You know, like your mom said, you can put your eye out with that thing. You got to really be careful with capacitors. It's entirely possible if you put them in backwards that they'll blow up. Oh, well, it was just a hollow core door. Granted, it was it was not. Okay, can you close that back door for me, please? So, um, it was you know it wasn't the, the thickest door in the world, but certainly if it hit you in the face or the eye, it would really really hurt, uh, to say the least. Um, now, capacitors. If a capacitor looks bad, and again the the three criteria is the top domed, is it curved at all on the top? Bad. It should be perfectly flat. Is the plastic coating on the top shrunk down at all? Bad. Or is that vent busted open? Obviously, that's bad. Um, then you definitely have to replace it. But sometimes capacitors look good when they really